Hello all. I welcome all of you in this uh, World Education Summit, the 20th edition, edition and the higher education segment of World Education Summit, the premier global event on innovation in education. This three day event uh, from 22nd today to 23rd and 24th of September, we will have great personalities, innovators and academic leaders talking about various innovations in uh, the education sector. And this uh, sort of uh, conference becomes very important and significant when uh, in last two years, the education has seen a paradigm shift. A lot of uh, digital initiatives being taken, a lot of challenges being faced, a lot of solutions uh, being made to deal with those challenges. And uh, uh, the higher edu education segment uh, saw a lot of uh, challenges. And in uh, that uh, era, when uh, the education sec uh, sector gets impacted with uh, COVID-19, um, usually, uh, it's very uh, right time to discuss how significant this uh, national education policy uh, becomes for us. Uh, and uh, we all know that uh, it is a very ambitious policy by government of India. And uh, we uh, want to discuss, we want to know that what sort of difference this uh, policy uh, makes in higher education sector in India. So after the inaugural session, we have in the next session eminent leaders and uh, you will get to know from eminent organizations, uh, renowned, renowned organizations across the globe and uh, the organization that are pride of India and uh, leaders from those organizations are uh, today here with us in this panel discussion. The panel discussion, first panel discussion after the inaugural session of 20th World Education Summit, Higher Education Segment uh, is uh, the topic is national education policy. Can it make a difference to higher education in India? Big question. And we have uh, eminent personalities to discuss on this question and its aspects. I'll first introduce all the panelists of this uh, discussion. Uh, I'll start with Professor Rajat Muna, Director of Indian Institute of Technology, Bilai. Warm welcome, uh, Professor Rajat. And uh, I also uh, welcome Dr. Pawan Kumar Singh, Director, Dr. Pawan Kumar Singh, Director of Indian Institute of Management, Tiruchirappalli. Dr. Pawan, welcome. Thank you. I welcome Professor Dr. Naveen Seth, Vice Chancellor of Gujarat Technical University, Ahmedabad. Dr. A. M. Ravani, Director of National Institute of Technology, Raipur. Welcome, Dr. Ravani. And last but not the least, Professor R. N. Saha, Vice Chancellor of Birla Institute of Technology and Sciences, Bits Pillani. Welcome, Professor Saha. Yeah, good morning and welcome. Thank you to all of you. So uh, to start with the discussion, as I said earlier, that national education policy is quite an ambitious policy from government of India. And uh, uh, after the launch of that policy, uh, we have seen a very crucial time of this COVID-19 impact on education. So uh, a large question, can it make a difference to higher education in India? So on this topic, I would uh, request firstly initial remarks from all our speakers uh, to set the tone uh, of the discussion. I would request uh, for, uh, first for initial remarks, uh, Professor Rajat Muna, Director of IIT Bhilai, to please give your initial remarks, Professor. Thank you, Karthik. Uh, I think, uh, let me first of all say a very short answer. Can NEP make an impact for higher education? The answer cannot be anything other than yes. I mean, NEP 2020 is a revolutionary uh, policy that has come about now and is looking at contemporary challenges that higher education was facing and trying to address them. The Over the years, I think our education actually in certain circumstances, certain cases had become a very stereotyping in institutions of higher learning where uh, 
you know newer electives newer topics and dynamism of education was very much there education moved at a certain rate and nep actually looks at reproducing that experience in other institutions as well it looks at uh, multidisciplinary education it looks at flexibility in the education programs and these two are very high impactful concepts that will move, move the higher education much forward for example if today we are looking at newer technologies uh, electric vehicles uh, materials we are looking at artificial intelligence machine learning industry 4.0 all these things when we look at these are the techniques these are the methods that will actually come very handy in shaping the next era of higher education and all of these things require multidisciplinary approach take an example of evs it requires uh, battery systems it requires delivery system it requires artificial intelligence if we are talking of autonomous vehicles also um, and even otherwise quite a lot of additional features that can be built in the charging circuit this charging circuits and as simple a thing as if electric vehicles have to go for charging on the somebody is on the road and charging requires few hours nobody will have a time the probably practical mechanism would be to swap the battery and one is swapping the battery then one has to look at the battery that he is giving away and the battery that is taking in what is the quality parameter and how would one be charging now this itself is a very big strong subject uh, materials what kind of materials to look at safety what kind of safety systems will come in and all these are multidisciplinary thing it requires right from chemistry chemical engineering uh, materials science it requires electrical engineering it requires computer science it requires mechanical engineering and lot many more plethora of uh, disciplines that will come about um, and therefore in the modern circumstances in the change scenarios multidisciplinary education is very much the need of the hour um, and if you look at any other aspect any other technological aspect multidisciplinary thing is very much part of the thing nep enables that and right from education level one will actually produce engineers higher education uh, experts who will actually be well versed in handling such challenges so in my opinion the nep is a revolutionary policy that has come about which will make uh, substantial change, changes in the way higher education system is being delivered today and the way higher education system will be delivered in the time to come bringing the flexibility as well as appropriateness in terms of job opportunities job preparedness for the engineers and such kind of things so with this i will come back uh, i will now pass it back to karthik uh, thank you very much thank you so much professor jat puna and think uh, your, your remarks are really uh, uh, on the point that yes uh, uh, there are a lot of things in this policy and there is a lot of uh, uh, to do with this policy and now i'll request uh, dr pavan kumar singh director of indian institute of management tiruchirappalli to please share the initial remarks thank you am i audible kartik ji perfect sir all right so thank you kartik sharma ji and i am very happy to be with luminaries here and uh, let me say my uh, few nostalgia with uh, with bilai and raipur i saw i am an iit in the same campus at one point of time when both were into their temporary campus i don't know whether iit bilai has shifted to its own campus or is still working with the government college no and we are still I, working from the same college we are still fantastic. working from the same college but i think soon we will be moving out as well because i have moved and yes. uh, I had visited about 18 months back uh, to Bits Pilani, uh, Professor Sasa, when oh, there was uh, when there was a process of uh, 
taking up bits pilani to uh, let us say status of national importance institute oh. and uh, uh, i have evaluated one phd thesis if i remember well uh, of gujarat technological university from where dr navin uh, said saab is there and uh, i have not done any work for nit raipur till now but anyway so i am very happy to be with uh, to, to be with you all here and uh, let me say very briefly a uh, few points because uh, kartik ji has given only 3 to 4 minutes i have already consumed 1 minute number 1 what is the last product which we are aiming at after this national education policy implementation either after that or even now what is the last product the last product is a student and a student's wholesomeness his or her development of round personality wholesome personality holistic personality that actually many times in different languages different different ways different ways in different types of syntax this national education policy is emphasizing and that's why we have to very clearly understand that when national education policy sets a direction that uh, after making the higher education multidisciplinary this target may be achieved now what is the meaning of multidisciplinary i think we should not mistake it multidisciplinary does not mean simply opening a new department and teaching students whatever comes on his way as i understand basically this national education policy is inviting us to go for two pronged approach vertical deepening of the subject in which the student wants to specialize and horizontally widening to connect that subject with various facets of other subjects as vedantic perspective says that eko brahm dvitiyo nasti eko sat dvitiyo nasti knowledge is one either i am doing mechanical engineering or ma in sociology or medicine what is the purpose of education we have to find the common algebraic factor and the common factor of all education all types of branches is only one that is service to humanity service to the world service to flora and fauna as in 14th century the adikavi of bengal had said uh, chandidas swabar upore manus satto tahar upore nahi it means this is a bengali line it, it means in english that above all um, uh, means um, uh, more important than anything else is basically service to mankind to humanity to even uh, non human animal worlds so nothing is beyond that that's why multi disciplinary means at world level specialization by vertical deepening in the subject that i am doing but say if i am studying mechanical engineering then in that case i should also know sociology because after all my engineering is to help society or if i am doing sociology i must have scientific temper to understand that how sociology influences various facets of humanity and that's why whatever subject i study as a specialization i must have 360 degree support of various other subjects because all subjects combinedly are aiming for only one thing that is the meaning of multi disciplinary second one is that for doing this we need very enlightened teachers actually enlightened word has been liberally used in this national education policy and here enlightened does not mean enlightened like gautam buddha but enlightened here means that 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 i am out of a tunnel vision for example for example if i am a, a student of a subject or if i am a professor of a subject i develop a tunnel vision uh, allow me allow me to just a bit dramatize it this is tunnel vision this tunnel vision my subject through my subject i see the world and this national education policy is saying that sometime you throw away this tunnel drop this tunnel and say that i see the things in totality and that's why through this way the multidisciplinary approach also demands that teachers develop in, in in that way and that's why a continuous development of teachers at higher educational institutions is a very demanding and it is a task and that has to be addressed next one is that you see when we i when i know my mother tongue uh, researchers also say i can learn other language also well though different languages have different music but if i understand the music of my own language it is it becomes i become a language oriented person i can pick up other language and that's why this is also saying uh, new uh, national education policy 
that uh, the, the the study, the teaching, the, 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 the assimilation of knowledge should be encouraged in local language, maybe in Hindi or maybe in any mother tongue. And this is very important. Last two points quickly. One is that Indian knowledge system. See, Indian knowledge system, when I say or when we say, we are not talking about geographical boundary of India. Actually, India has been, had been, has been the custodian of universal knowledge. When the whole world was struggling for the first way of civilization, we had the best literature available in the form of Upanishad. Actually, we are custodian of that world level wisdom literature. And that's why we also need to see the whole perspective through Indian knowledge system. Uh, and last one is that uh, in future, every academic institution will have two geographies. One geography where it is face to face learning and the other geography, even COVID-19 will go after some time. I pray that it should go as quickly as possible. But even if COVID-19 will go, we have tested the nectar of online education. So every future higher education institution will have two geographies. One geography serving the need through face to face interaction but other geography where continuous on continuous basis online learning or a mix of online offline learning will continue. So in that way, we need to invest in technology and especially those institutions which feel a little bit pinch or a pinch of a shortage of fund to them also I will say, please don't think that any, any spending on technology is only spending it is actually investment. So with this remarks, I wait for further interaction as suggested by Karthik Ji. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Pawan. And I think uh, you have rightly mentioned uh, how this policy will uh, bring forth uh, in better way the Indian uh, knowledge system. And uh, right, uh, you are right that uh, in this multidisciplinary approach, there will be a larger vision and uh, we will the students will understand the purpose of education, which is service to humanity and the uh, uh, own language uh, if it is a known language is also a very important aspect of this policy uh, rightly mentioned about all these aspects and uh, i will come to you with questions i will now ask uh, the uh, next speaker i'll request professor naveen Seth uh, to please uh, give the initial remark yeah namaskar good morning uh, yes sir. my esteemed panelists i'm audible Perfectly, sir. Yeah, yeah. And esteemed panelists and all those who join virtually in this important program. So very first, I congratulate the organizer for selecting a very important topic, current topic. So can it make a difference to higher education in India? My earlier speaker, Rajatji and Pawanji, now very nicely described important uh, reforms of the NEP. So in India, we have a very complex, at present, very, very complex education system, particularly higher education. We see the university, there is a state university, central university, private university, deemed to university, standalone institutes, means about 1,000 universities, such different type, and about 40,000 colleges, and about 10,000 um, these uh, standalone institutes, and like that. So very, very complex uh, edu higher education, particularly. So this national education policy 2020 focus all such things. And the important reforms is the de-affiliation. So it suggests that this affiliation pattern is only prevailing in India and surrounding some countries, but it is not that. Because by this system, very weakest institute and the best institute, but students will get the degree from a one institute, same university. So there is no healthy competition and like that, it affects the quality of the higher education. So de-affiliation within 15 years, one has to de-affiliate the uh, colleges. So either the university, uh, they have to convert into multidisciplinary or the educational institute, higher education institute to be converted into a multidisciplinary or the degree awarding institutes. So that is the important reforms. 
this is the first policy in which from preschool to the higher education the uh, complete education is covered and uh, there are number of regulatory body at present there is ugc there is iict there is a uh, uh, pharmacy council the medical council bar council and number of other regulatory body architecture council so there is one body in higher education that is the national higher education commission is uh, that provision is there and uh, the regulatory changes will be made by the central government so that is also an important reforms they are also at present only the uh, the examination system just it evolved the memory power not the skill or the other thing so this education policy the holistic education uh, and holistic development of a students uh, so it will be more focus on uh, that uh, the 360 degree evaluation uh, not the rote learning so that is also very important the gross enrollment ratio at present the gross enrollment ratio of india is 26% so that is very less it has targeted that uh, up to 2030 it may be 50% gross enrollment ratio in higher education and uh, it also focus on the 100% growth gross enrollment ratio in uh, preschool to the secondary level so that is also uh, there the technology platform to be developed by the government and uh, the education is assessed by the all students at all the corner of the india either it is a tribal belt or a, a very interior area but they are able to assess with the uh, uh, technology platform and that infrastructure to be developed uh, by the government of india so focus on the e learning second thing at present uh, every district has don't have any university so that is also a target that the higher education to be assessed uh, by all in all area their nearby uh, area so uh, within our 10 years uh, 10 to 15 years there may be a higher education multidisciplinary institute in every district of india the skill and vocational uh, part that is also focused so uh, the uh, there may be a lot of changes is required uh, at the uh, a curriculum here in at present uh, most of the part that is the classroom teaching even the by one report of the fiki they said that only 23 percent graduate in india they are employable means 77 are not employable because they are not having any skill or hands-on training so this particular part is also focused and important challenges in this NEP that is the implementation part. At present, it is already one year is over by uh, when the, our government is accepted. But in so many states, uh, some task force is formed and other thing. But actual concrete work is done by the very few states. So implementation part is very very challenging part. Uh, but I have just referred it, the whole NEP 2020 documents. Uh, from 60 to 70 percent part of implementation that is lies on with the universities. Uh, and 30 percent for some regulatory parts and other thing that is lies with the government, state government and central government. So the role of university is very important. And uh, because the previous uh, all such um, education policy were failed because they implemented just 15 percent 20 percent and it we have not received uh, we have uh, not have any uh, results so definitely uh, the policy is very uh, very good focus all the issues of the education but the implementation part is also very very challenging 
and in that case the leaders of the university vice chancellor chancellor they have to play the important role uh, to uh, implement it in a, a latter end spirit uh, and last thing uh, <coughs> pavan ji has already said about the indian knowledge system this whole education policy that is bharat centric india centric and our students are very very interested suppose we have launched our is a technological university we have launched 12 program certificate program of indian knowledge system all over the india the students professionals they are registering for that not only from india from outside the india we have get the good response within a week we have get more than 300 registration and so definitely uh, and i have asked one doctor has registered me and in a way uh, our course with the way why said what why you have joined with the, this program he said i am from india and i don't know anything about ved i have to know about the ved means if the students are aware of this indian knowledge system definitely they have the proud for india then it will be result into a new innovation it will be result into a new product uh, new process or a new definitely it will boost the innovation uh, right thank you thank you very much right thank you thank you professor navin and i think you also uh, uh, gave stress on indian knowledge system how this policy uh, you know, focuses on and also it is simplifying very various processes but all these things are a challenge to implement and responsibility comes to the leaders like you and uh, others who are heading the universities to implement such uh, reformative you know reforming aspects of this uh, uh, policy uh, thank you so much and uh, dr am ravani who is director of national institute of technology raipur i would request you to uh, deliver the initial remarks dr ravani okay uh, Dr. A. M. Ravani, uh, okay, there's some technical glitch that uh, we lost connection with Dr. Ravani. So, meanwhile, my uh, technical team will look at it. I'll request uh, to the next speaker, Professor R. N. Saha, Vice Chancellor of uh, Birla Institute of Technology and Science, Pittsburgh, a very popular institute in India and across the globe. I request you, Professor Saha, to give your initial remarks. Okay. Uh... Uh, thank you, Mr. Kartik. Uh, I hope I am audible. Uh, though we started, we started it morning, but it is now just crossing the twelve. So good afternoon to all of you. Uh, yeah. so my earlier uh, panelists have mentioned something. I will take a different uh, direction a little bit to discuss this. You know, your main point is whether NEP will have an impact in higher education. Yes, very much. It will be impacting the higher education, no doubt of that. But what I am trying to point it out is that whatever mentioned there, are this new totally? No. I'll give it four or five things. Only it has come to this in a document form. Let's see. Take the regulation. It has suggested single regulation unit having four verticals. Things they have mentioned there. But if you recollect some 15 years back in another era, same thing was discussed. Even a bill was taken to the parliament, which was not approved till now, or rather it has withdrawn. But it is we are knowing it that it is a required deregulation or a single channel regulation system. But still, after 14, 15 years, we are still having multiple regulatory system. If it is a pharmacy institute. It has to be UGC. It has to be AICDA. It has to be PCI. Then it has to be state, state technical board. Many things. So not new. Then come to the multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary. Are this not the very old and many universities always emphasize that? But it did not lead to much. So it is also not new. But emphasis is given now. Yes, good. Third point I'll bring it. is which is uh, new in the policy only few university follow that it is a simultaneous study of two degree system if you if you remember at the read the uh, particular section where it says a student may be allowed to do two degree 
Is it also a new, it has been felt, I share with you that Bits Pilani introduced this system of dual degree at the same level in 70s period. What is that system? That a science student can have a second degree in engineering because science and engineering can go hands in hands and in hands and then it can be a very very useful what was the system we introduced that any student joining a science msc we bit learning offers four years integrated msc program there is a no bsc program any student join in msc program like physics chemistry mathematics economics or biological sciences on the basis of their first year performance, they can get a second degree in engineering, which can be computer science, triple E, uh, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering. Think of that. If a MSc physics student takes the B triple E, what can be the benefit? If a, a MSc mathematics student takes B computer science, how it can be beneficial? It is not that every student are given, but those who are doing engineering fine, but to attract good students in science program, Bitspilani created this policy in 70s period. And it has really given fantastic results. But does it mean that two degrees are required to be four plus four, eight years? No. What is recently EICT circular, if you see, what EICT is scaling now, it has followed in Bitspilani 70s. I don't know, my NIT or IIT, a colleague may be knowing recently ICT has said that a student has to be given opportunity to come back for second degree, but some of the common courses need not be repeated. What Bitspinari thought that these modules, because Bitspinari program in 70s was a modular system, they said whatever the common modules, these are not to be required to be repeated. So that can be common. So when a boy after one year of MSc study, he is given a second degree. His total duration is going to be not four plus four, eight years, not four plus three, seven years, but four plus one, five years, because a lot of modules are common. Even second year, third year, he can do courses of the MSc program as well as B program. And decades after decades, in five years, these students are getting a degree of MSc as well as B. So that is also not new. Now coming to the other things is the students here. Yes, we are all always trying to do because universities, first and most important thing is the students. So it should be learning oriented instead of teaching oriented, for which technology is very, very important. But technology cannot be only the source because technology is supposed to provide me help. It is an aid. But faculty is important for which efficient faculty are required. Now, the most important point is how to implement it. Is it very good? This the committee has put it in a document, NEP, which will help us. But I feel one important point is missing there is the industry relationship, which is a very, very important, strong emphasis. If I now, I'll finish it with one point, implementation. If you read the NEP, it says at the, rate, at the end, where is the making way? It's recommended that MHRD should be changed to MOE which is the only thing has been done probably in one year. I think all of us have the responsibility to take it forward. Whatever we discussed, whether it's a multidisciplinary, dual degree, or a body, single body, I think we have to work quickly. But I tell you, B. Spilani is the IOE. IOE is supposed to have a lot of, IOE means, I mean to say, Institute of Eminence. You know that at the first stage, six institutes were given freedom, and Bitspilani is one of them from the private sector, but still, frankly speaking, even after so many years, is it totally free? No. I think that is another important part. So it is not the question of making in a policy. It is more important how to implement it. That is the more important. Otherwise, policy remains only on the paper. Several other policies were also their educational policy from very long time. I think what is all of us, government sector, private sector, all of us have to work together to make these things to happen. And then only it will be a really meaningful policy. Otherwise, it will remain only on the papers. I think I'll stop it here for more discussion after that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Professor Saha. I think uh, you have rightly mentioned that 
uh, all these things are not very new but emphasis was not given maybe earlier now it is given now but still the challenge of implementation remains the same and if it is not implemented i think it will be the same as it was uh, just that something on paper was created and nothing more than that but yes uh, as uh, mr uh, professor said also mentioned implementation uh, is the key and uh, very important now i uh, request uh, uh, dr am ravani director of uh, nit raipur to please share the initial remarks yeah very good morning to all of you and uh, thanks the organizer for providing me this opportunity to share my views with the audience and with the uh, panelists uh, other Uh, panel members a uh, lot of things have already been uh, talked about by my previous panelist but very basic question comes in my mind is that this is new education policy 2020 of which we are talking about uh, but prior to that there was also one education policy so why at all there is a need of thinking of a new education policy if you recall the previous education policy was uh, came into existence in 1986 and then certain modification made in 1992 and then we were continuing with that now because if you see there are a lot of changes are happening because of the automation because of the digitization the way of delivery of the education is change because of the changes in the employment employment scenario is change the demand of the employers is change they are not only looking for the knowledge they are also looking for the skill and more importantly rate of change in the recent past is very very fast change is a very natural phenomena that is happening always but the rate of change in the recent past is very is more and this all necessitated the need of a new education policy and i am very happy to say that this our new education policy takes care of all such requirements is all are incorporated in that if we think of any education system there are a few stakeholders or i can say important pillars the first is very most important thing is student second one is faculty third is the process of imparting education and fourth is the governance or administration fortunately nep 2020 focusing focuses on all these aspects if we say about faculty yes there is a focus that faculty should be given flexibility flexibility of offering the courses as per their expertise as per the need of the ever they should be motivated and for that professional development should also be there that is also talked about next important stakeholder is the student and the student lot of flexibility is given to the student is not that the student will only learn but more importantly they will learn how to learn lot of freedom is given to the students multi entry multi exit this is a kind of you can say flexibility offered to the students so if they feel that because of some reason they are not in a position to continue a particular degree they may exit and at the exit they may get a certificate or diploma or something like that and one great characteristic of this offering flexibility to the student is abc academic bank of credits where students can earn credit that will be kept in bank academic bank and that can be redeemed at a later stage for acquiring a particular degree so this is how lot of flexibility is offered to the students as well if we talk about the process process starting from admission to all governance kartik i think this connection happened
we are there is some uh, network issue yeah are you able to listen me now yeah now we can hear you yeah 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 okay i am sorry there is some instability problem with the internet again he is out oh sorry i was also on mute so um, i think uh, the camera is stuck i think there's some uh, loss of connection but we majorly uh, have taken initial remarks from professor ravani and uh, i think he is uh, very right that yes there uh, uh, even after 1986 and uh, after the uh, some change in 1992 uh, there is a need of uh, the new uh, education policy uh, and uh, it very suspect the flexibility to students or the faculty uh, he has emphasized on this uh, you know significance and the need of uh, this policy very right uh, and now uh, i'll uh, before coming with my questions let us first take the audience questions uh, which we already have here with us and i'll start with you professor rajat muna uh, amrita jha uh, from gd goenka gurugram Uh, she has asked that how are universities going to evolve in the next decade i think she is she may be referring the national education policy through this uh, nep uh, can you reply on that professor uh thank you thank you kartik um, i think uh, my fellow panelists have already said lot of things and let me repeat this in fact professor saha actually gave a very interesting thing where he said that certain kind of practices were already in place in various institutes and various universities and what does nep 2020 does about it what does it bring on the focus so basically nep 2020 takes the best practices which were there and bringing them into the mainstream uh, dual degree major and minor programs they've been there in many uh, institutions and now this becomes a part of mainstream when this is going to become part of a mainstream universities are definitely going to evolve for example if we are talking of multidisciplinary program maybe labs and the departments get disassociated there will be administrative reasons to associate the labs but then academic reasons on why a student of chemical engineering not do their labs in department of uh, mechanical engineering or department of computer science that uh, barrier will actually start getting broken in a similar way in the modern universities in the modern classroom and i'll probably talk about this how classrooms evolved in 70s we used to have classrooms with only blackboards and chalkboards in mid 80s people started bringing in transparencies and transparency based projections which is something which today doesn't exist at all it disappeared but then it required a display screen a white screen to come in the classrooms gradually it moved on to white boards where people could write using white board markers and now people are talking of projection screens where computer based projections are going to be very much there in all universities and in my opinion the future classrooms these are going to be the must so called smart classrooms where projections teacher can actually project and using online education system education even though students may be placed in the uh, classroom the lot of delivery within the classroom will actually happen using online mechanism so in my opinion time to come probably even this uh, projection systems will start disappearing 
and lot and lot of more computing elements and personal computing systems will start coming in. People will start looking at mobiles, people will start looking at uh, uh, desktops and uh, laptops, where education delivery will happen. And when we are actually bringing this education delivery to the students, I think there are many more things that will actually come in. Internet will become part and parcel of our education system. Today, when we actually look at our education, we actually tell our students not to use internet, not to use uh, mobile phones and these kind of things. I think in time to come, we will encourage them to go and look at online resources, to uh, look at various references, and the teacher's delivery is going to be a value-added delivery on top of it. In other words, it is probably going to be from spoon feeding to collecting things and making a more valuable education delivery. That is going to happen. And universities and education systems which fail to deliver this will probably be leaving behind in the race of imparting better quality education. This is what, in my opinion, is going to happen. More and more classrooms will be equipped with digital information systems with digital mechanisms with computing and technology is probably going to be the in thing labs will probably go away from the clutches of departments but will become more available to students administratively there may be a association with the department but academically they will be more available and that is what i think is going to happen in the time uh, and Universities are going to bring in more and more multidisciplinary components, more and more uh, novel architectures of imparting degrees, better exit options. Somebody who is not able to cope up with the entire thing may probably be able to leave in between with diploma or certificate as was being talked about with multiple entry options. Already, uh, some of our education systems allow people to enter into the second year of education, but maybe as uh, bank, credit banks, uh, academic bank of credits, you know, people will probably be able to swiftly move from one university to another university and get the best of the education tailor-made to their own needs. And that is actually what is going to happen. Uh, the universities are going to change character. Educational institutes are going to change character. And the change agents are going to be all such universities, whether private, state universities, and central universities or deemed universities, or institutes of higher learning, institutes of national importance. These are going to be torch wearers of the change. We are going to look at those changes to happen. Uh, as somebody rightly put it, uh, implementation is the key, and we probably will do the implementation right because if implementation is not done rightly the best of the policy may not actually fruit uh, give results uh, bear fruits and that is what we trying to come we will look at thank you right 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 professor thank you so much uh, i think uh, this also answers this the second question by amrita that physically and digitally what does the university of the future look like and what type of institutions will survive i think um, you have answered partially on this question also uh, when we talk about the how university is going to evolve uh, but i'll take one question of rahul rana uh, from ms ramaya university bangalore and i'll uh, request you to answer that question mr uh, professor saha that uh, is nep sufficient enough to bring indian higher education system to global standards uh okay can you hear me yes please uh you see <laughs> If I, if you, if you ask me a question simply yes or no, I'll say no. It doesn't indicate that one. Uh, you know, question is not that a policy can make a university whether he can attract global students or not. It is ultimately, as I, my initial discussion also, I said, is a question of implementation of the things. So, institute has to work hard to make it the attraction for the global students. At this, what is the hindrance? Try to understand. 
One is there some regulations. Say, for example, I tell you, IITs, I know they have some restriction because they're government funded. They cannot take any foreign student, probably. Similarly, many other things are there. But most importantly is the quality of the education. I tell you a simple way. Uh, in my 35 years of service with Bits Pilani, last seven and a half years I was in Dubai, heading the Bits Pilani Dubai campus. So I happened to lead an international campus at Dubai, and where about 30 international universities have branch campuses. Today, if I say international citizen of Dubai, why he will study in Bits Pilani? After studying Bits Pilani, is he thinking to make his life in the India? If he doesn't work in India, if he goes to abroad or USA or UK, will that be beneficial? Or if he studies in Rochester Institute or, say, for example, Harriet Watt, which will be beneficial? Unless there's a two aspects here. One is the quality of education, which Indian university should provide which will be better than others, then people will be coming to us. Or my facilities here is fantastic, where I can make my career after graduation, which Indian students are going to USA or UK or European country. Why? They get a degree. It is not that they only go to MIT, Oxford or Cambridge. They go even ordinary university because after finishing, they can have a job there where the life is a much, much better that way even they are now going to new zealand australia i know that they are at also attracting lakhs of lakhs students of india who goes out i think we have to do it policy can help us it did not mention that elaborately but anyhow within the framework if universities indian universities take a cue that no we have to improve that then it is possible that way but yes it did not say clearly of that one that is my answer thank you Thank you, thank you, Professor Saha. And I think uh, you know, your views are very uh, rational. Uh, uh, we may not uh, uh, be very ambitious about that. Uh, okay, uh, something can change the world in just one go. That's right. Uh, and I would now request uh, uh, Professor Naveen Seth to answer uh, one of the questions. Uh, I think I would like to ask. You said that uh, Professor said that. It, uh, this uh, policy focuses very much on Indian knowledge system. So, yeah. uh, uh, if it is focus, focusing on Indian knowledge system, was the earlier policies or, or in India this Indian knowledge system was not emphasized on, or if it was not, then how challenging will it be to you know get it into the students and the, this young generation, uh, the Indian values and all these things which uh, need to be there in Indian knowledge system just uh, your thoughts on that yeah very good uh, question uh, kartik ji yeah so this uh, nep 2020 focus on first the indian knowledge system uh, and as well as the indian languages also at present uh, in higher education particularly the professional education the, the students particularly from the rural area they are facing uh, number of problems because of the language because most of the professional education in English and they are from the rural background so they feel some inferiority and other things also the suicidal attempt and so other problems are created and uh, actual research is not uh, uh, focused uh, particularly by such region also second thing uh, you see the uh, after 1930, not a single Indian, particularly in research area, particularly, they have not received the Nobel Prize. There are some Indians. They received the Nobel Prize after 1930. But they have basic education here in India. Later on, they go outside. They studied there. And they get the Nobel Prize, either uh, Dr. Khurana or so many things. Some Indians, they receive the prize, Nobel Prize, a Peace Prize, like in Mother Teresa or the uh, on children, but so some that, but as far as the research, no such Nobel Prize after 1930 because uh, the actual uh, focus, particularly in our uh, young generation, they don't have proud, they don't have confidence, confidence. That, that by this Indian knowledge system, the confidence will be developed, 
they have the pride will be developed and uh, definitely when the pride will be developed they will work uh, for the uh, nation uh, and they will achieve a good innovation suppose right. uh, to implement this we have introduced a simple thing that in every thesis they have to write the literature survey we have introduced a very small line that on one part okay they can write but on the second part of the literature survey the indian related research by the in indian knowledge suppose there is any person is working on the medicinal plant then uh, the indian knowledge system either what is there in the charak sanhita for that plant or in the sarandar sanhita what that plant so uh, actual uh, indian knowledge system then their heights uh, students at present they don't know anything about the india's contribution in science and technology they no knowledge for that that's why there is no pride for the nation so by introducing this indian knowledge system by focusing the indian knowledge system definitely uh, uh, the our young generation will work hard for the nation right. and definitely right. uh, they will achieve it right professor said and i think uh, in my uh, student days uh, i participated in a delhi university in a debate competition the topic was very uh, particular topic that bhartiya uh, paschatya bhautik pragati ke sangrakshan hetu bhartiya adhyatmik sambal apariharya hai and uh, i was fortunately the winner of that delhi university debate and uh, the judge said that uh, you won because you said that this uh, western growth is also important but uh the indian uh, uh, spirituality is the key but uh, mostly the people uh, who uh, there were two group of people one was supporting the western growth and uh, another group was supporting the bhartiya adhyatma there were nobody yeah. who was uh, you know supporting the both that uh, you know we need uh, to club these two together for the growth and uh, i think um, this is what indian knowledge system is that we don't oppose anything but we uh, should have um, you know indian uh, ness uh, uh, which uh, uh, india is called jagat guru for some reason uh, uh, but uh, i will now request because we don't have much time uh, for closing remarks from each of our speakers uh, for one minute uh, uh, closing remarks is requested from each of the speaker and uh, i'll start with dr pawan kumar singh uh, dr pawan um, request you to please uh, deliver the closing remarks thank you kartik ji uh, you see this uh, national education policy 2020 is uh, a call for uh, rededicating uh, all the stakeholders in higher education because our topic is higher education or in context of school education rededicating every stakeholder for achieving the broader goals and let me say that uh, as far as uh, internationalization of education is concerned or creating high quality education is concerned this national education policy actually goes in that direction along with as i said it is vertical deepening deepening and horizontal expanding both because we have to compete for example if a student of botany is doing msc should also know the holistic knowledge but should be one of the best botany student in the world so uh, specialization has to be deeper that's why four years of education in graduation graduation with research will be so uh, quality oriented that even after doing only graduation of four years one would become eligible for phd we should take a hint that it means we are again uh, uh, redignifying again dignifying the graduation degree and i found that graduation degree has got redignified in past 15 20 years or 25 years and that needs to be further dignified so that after graduation graduation degree has to be so qualitative that many should think voluntarily to come out of the education system saying that i have got enough education and now i want to serve the society and only those who want to go for higher education should go not that everyone should go only for pg and phd so these are some of the things i would like to say that quality at every checkpoint plus integrating in a more let us say 360 degree angle approach 
So this is my remarks. Thank you. Uh, very uh, nicely summarized, Dr. Pawan. Uh, and uh, I request now Professor A.M. Ravani for closing remarks. Yeah. Uh, basically, NP 2020 is providing a very practical approach, if I say. And its focus, focus is more on creativity and innovation. And uh, it basically aims to develop good, thoughtful, well-renowned and creative individuals. Those who are the students, they will be created out of this. That is the aim. But basically for achieving this aim, definitely there are certain, you can say, policies and guidelines are all are there. Integration of technology is very much emphasized in that. When the question of all this implementation comes, definitely we have a lot of challenges during implementation. As far as the technology is concerned, the most important issue is of addressing the digital divide that also be taken care properly and a lot of flexibility as i was mentioning earlier also flexibility is there to the student flexibility to the you can say the faculty flexibility to the education institutes a lot of things are there while implementing all these things that all this flexibility should not create a chaos because when we are when giving a lot of freedom and flexibility, there is a possibility of chaos or confusion. So well-defined procedures should be there and that should be, I should say, the flexibility within a rigid bound. Okay, I think uh, we have lost. Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, Professor Ravani, for your closing remarks. I request Professor Rajat Muna to please uh, give the closing remarks. Thank you. First of all, it was a very good experience to share a stage with all the eminent personalities here. Professor uh, Pavan Kumar Singh, Professor Ravani, uh, Professor Naveen Seth, and Professor R.N. Saha. It was a very interesting, articulative discussion of various aspects of NEP 2020. And I have no doubt in my mind that NEP 2020 will provide a platform for a great uh, reforms in the higher education and the education in general. But this is the first time a policy has actually been looking at education as a wholesome entity and not right from school education, right from preschool education to post-degree education. I mean, it's looking at education as a wholesome thing. This itself is a very interesting aspect. And several new concepts which have been brought about will be game changer in the education to come. Of course, one question that remains is, is implementation going to be correctly done? Or will there be problems in implementation? That only time will tell. But definitely, the policy is a big enabler for adopting newer changes in the higher education. Thank you very much. Thank you, ELETS, for inviting me to be part of this uh, uh, panel and uh, you know to be part of this team panel and in the uh, in the vicinity of everybody here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor. Now I request uh, Professor R N Saha to please take the closing remarks. Okay, I'll keep it one minute only. Uh, you know, uh, policy is a very good policy idea is a always fantastic thing. But the most important is the implementation. One big problem I see that one into how to reach the rural area or the far away places. Today's program, who are probably viewing it, only who have a fantastic internet connectivity or in the urban area. So I think the big challenge how to take to the fringe universities, colleges, and the people they are. It's a big challenge. We have to work for that one. Second point is change of mind. As someone asked, is that sufficient? The question is that anything, if we are really interested, it can be done. But people have to be flexible. People have to come out of the comfort zone of their life. Whether it's a teacher, if I'm teaching the same thing last five years, no, nothing is going to happen. So university administration, governance, everyone has to think, adapt to the changes and target to achieve it. The third point is that is a very, very important is the 
intent to do it, it is a very, very important it's seriousness to do the bring the changes. It is an important for put the dedication and the hard work. If we can't do it, whether it is a policy or no policy, we can do it fantastic and we can attract the international students. I'll just finish it. Why Nalanda used to call the international students that time, China and from other places? Because they were better than other universities. Today, it is happening opposite way. I think we have to revert that one, but it is possible to do it. Thank you very much. Very nicely. Yes, yes, nicely. Very nicely uh, summarized, Mr. Saha, uh, Professor Saha. Uh, Professor Seik, uh, your closing remarks, please. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Karthik. So it's a very good discussion, and most of the points are related with the NEP and the implementation that is covered very nicely. And definitely the uh, problems that you have stated, can it make a difference to higher education in India? Sure. The, the Rajat already said in initial remarks. So definitely this NEP is a very, uh, very, very important. There may be a remarkable change in course of time. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. So I think I have taken closing remarks from all these speakers present here. Uh, we would like to present the speaker certificate to all of you for sparing time and uh, sharing such great ideas around the NEP. Uh, can uh, I request my team to present the speaker certificates for Professor Rajat Muna, Director of IIT Bilai. Thank you so much, Professor. Then next, uh, Dr. Pawan Kumar Singh, Director of IIM Tiruchiripalli. Dr. Pawan Kumar, thank you so much. Professor Naveen Said, Professor Dr. Naveen Said, Vice Chancellor of Gujarat Technical University, Ahmedabad. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Naveen Said. Dr. A. M. Ravani, Director of NIT National Institute of Technology, Raipur. Thank you so much, Dr. Ravani. Professor R. N. Saha, Vice Chancellor of BITS, Pilani, Birla Institute of Technology and Sciences, Pilani. Thank you so much, Professor Saha. And uh, here it's time to close this discussion. I think we can go on and on. There's a lot to discuss on NMP and a lot uh, of great ideas uh, you great minds have. Uh, but I think with positive time, we have to close this session. Audience who are watching us on Avatar, the virtual 3D platform, keep watching us. We're we'll coming up uh, in a few minutes. We'll be uh, here with next session. Uh, stay tuned. And thank you so much, eminent panelists. Namaskar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kartikji. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you.